um, not only did we uh, learn a lot on our research trips to Mexico, but we had a lot of Mexican people working at Pixar, working on our movie with us, and uh, many Mexican Americans. So they were constantly telling us stories about their family and helping us find those very specific things that we, would hopefully make the, the, the movie feel Mexican. Creo que somos la única familia en México que odia la música. Fortunately, I can come at least from a Mexican American perspective. Um, but even so, you know, Mexican families are all very different from each other. So we also depended a lot on um, a team of cultural consultants. Músicos son egoístas e irresponsables. No más música. Hazle caso a tu familia. Kind of three. Um, three types of music that we knew we wanted to, to incorporate. One was traditional Mexican music to help give a, a, a sense of, of life to the town that Miguel lives in, and then the land of the dead, uh, the, the, the music that inhabits the world. And then there was the score by Michael Giacchino, and you know, so much of the emotion comes from, from that, and we really wanted to lean into Mexican instrumentation and, and this kind of grand golden era um, uh, sense in, in the score. And then lastly, there's the original songs, because Miguel's a musician, he needs to use music. Great places to visit, um, especially um, down in Morelia during Dia de Muertos. Um, but the thing that was most important were, were the, the times that we spent with families. El Dia de Muertos ha comenzado. Hoy solo importa la familia. Well, there was one family that we uh, spent time with, and uh, we were in the room where they had their ofrenda, and I noticed that their dog, the family dog, kept sneaking into the room and trying to eat a muffin off the ofrenda, and the, the, the mother would shoo the dog out, but then the dog would sneak back in and try to get the muffin again. And so I noticed that and remembered it, and that was something we put in the film when Dante, the Sholo dog in the film, jumps onto the Rivera family ofrenda and starts to eat some mole. Quédate conmigo, amigo. No sé qué es este lugar. Not only did we need to tell a good story, but we needed it to be culturally respectful and authentic. So that was another layer yeah. of complexity. Plus, it's just a big, complicated movie. It's a big adventure. It's a big journey. Um, we had to create the whole land of the dead and fill it with thousands and thousands of skeletons. And skeletons were hard. We had never animated skeletons before. So really, there was no aspect of this movie that wasn't difficult yeah. in some way. Bueno, ¿verdad? ¿En serio siguen aquí? Bienvenidos. ¿Algo que declarar? Ya que lo pregunta, pues, algo. Nobody knows what the land of the dead looks like, so we had to come up with it in our imagination. So of course we wanted to, to use all of the inspiration, all the photos, all the places that we visited from here, and we wanted it be, to be full of color and uh, reflect a lot of the architecture and uh, everything we saw here. So, And we also wanted it to be set at nighttime, so you could see all of the color uh, and light uh, and joy right. and celebration. What was so great about about the Latin American version is that we could we had um, access to just this wealth of talented actors and, and musicians and, and writers who, you know, already automatically relate to this family and relate to this culture and relate to this tradition. Ahora tú debes decidir. You know, the film's message is very much the same message that, uh, you know, that Dia de Muertos expresses. It's about the importance of, of remembering our ancestors and our loved ones and making sure that we tell their stories and keep their memories alive and pass them along to the next generation.